asking her what her future plans are. She's telling me about all the movies and stuff that she's planned in the future. And then he comes over, then the guy from Miller said, yeah, well, we've got on the works, you know, other things like, you know, important things about the, the, uh, about the, the, the bitch that the woman is playing, Monty comes into the green soccer. <laughs> no, but um, it, it just, like I said, it's a rarity that a woman carries something in, in Latin cinema. Yeah, it is, because it's a male-dominated society. No, she spent a lot of time in our country, but I think that has an influence on her carrying herself on the screen. Mm. So, yeah, but like I said, I'm going, I would push him, and I, I consider it heavily in the field of photography. Oh, interesting. Of the things that I saw, okay, I'm talking the best editing that I saw, period, flat out, was on cinema verite. Yeah. There's no there's no comprehension. There's no nothing competition. On, there's no nothing competition in it. Of the four things I saw, the best photography was uh, the Reina del Sur. Mm -hmm. That is it just it just like I said, they have a tradition of rich, colorful filming in in Mexico. It mm -hmm. showed on the screen. They yeah. put the money where it counts is making things look visually beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the acting was very was was you know there was you, okay, if they'd have been speaking in English, you couldn't have told it was not an American production. Other than it's more colorful. More colorful, but we, we used to do that. We haven't done it quite like that. I know, but we used to, when I was young, we used to do things like that. It could have been a new style. That's right, but you know, everything that old is new again. But I mean, I can imagine, okay, um, I can, okay, I know the networks are talking about doing telenovelas for the United States. Uh, some of them, you know, NBC, of course, because they own Telemundo. Uh, and I think Fox is planning it. The problem is, is that they don't go over well. People do not want to see uh, a five-day-a-week thing because um, they'll, they'll, okay, here it works. You can do the serial thing, which is once a week, and at the end of the thing, tune in next week, same time, same date, and see whether, you know, our hero is actually blown up in the train that is careening to his destruction that they'll see but will they turn in tune in tomorrow to see you know whether she is raped or not tune in tomorrow to see whether she blows the guy's head up tomorrow tune in tomorrow to see whether she loses her underwear or not mm -hmm. uh, it does we don't we don't we have a, a very low attention span in our country <laughs> so um, and it's not just kids no because it's an adult audience this is not a kiddie show no. None of the telenovelas. I mean, we've talked to Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada's career was reborn by doing a telenovela. Oh, was it? Yeah. He, you know, mm -hmm. she didn't want to do what he needed to money, and it basically was the best thing in the world he could ever done. It made him an international star instead of just an American star, which is why he can arrogantly do the thing now like he did when he was punched, because he is an international Latin star because of a telenovela. Oh, and he's so likable oh, anyway. Oh, he's a nice, funny guy. So. He really is. He's just funny. You listen to him talking. He's funny. Just, uh, like I said, well, one of the things you know, on the rap that I really appreciate is that, uh, is that the people are sitting down there talking to other people just like they were sitting around a, a you know, you were sitting having, like, like you were having coffee in a mm -hmm. restaurant or something. You're just sitting there talking to everybody. Yeah. This isn't talking down. This is making jokes They're about things. They're just like things. talking to peers. Like, you know, it's like you're. It is. It's like, okay. hey, we're catching up. But, you know, how was that last show you did? And, and, right. And then, and then oh, 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 oh. You know, when they got, they thought of something else to say. Yeah. That was like her last night. You know, like that that nine year old little girl who always oh, 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 oh. You know, you know, she's got to, She just remembers something else to talk about. So she actually. She took so much control of what was going on, they didn't get to ask as many questions. <laughs> she was in control of the room. A lot of it has to do with the fact... She had a commanding performance. She's playing uh, the, the lead of a telenovela um, in an industry that's male-dominated. And right, and she did take charge because she, she expanded upon everything she was asked and went beyond everything well, was asked. You know, here's part of it is I am really looking forward to seeing who actually gets Emmy nominations since we've yeah. been watching some of these different shows and we're seeing episodes, actually these are the episodes that they've um, they pick. submitted. That's right, yeah. they submitted or they picked or, you know, for them to go ahead and look at. Yeah. Maybe. Well, actually, this is what they're giving to the people that are voting. 
um, yeah. as to what they want them to remember them by. Yeah, and, 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 and I've done this before in my life. This was her first ever experience doing it. And she basically, I look at it things from the same direction that a lot of the people in the audience that are members, they look at production values, writing, acting, all of that stuff. Uh, and she's looking at it from the... Pure uh, entertainment. From pure entertainment. So, and a fan. And a fan, which makes it work different because, I mean, uh, which is funny, I mean, I, I do all the cutting, so... <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm the one that could make the decisions on how it's going to be. I mean, I could, I could actually slant it towards all me or slant it towards all her, so I actually do do a balancing act. Well, it's actually kind of interesting because when you talk about cutting, um, it brings me back to Cinema Verde where they shot they shot a tremendous amount of footage. Yeah. And they were sitting there talking about, you know, they were trying to project for the cameras the, how they people they wanted people to see them. And, you know, at the end they talk about how they didn't realize how much power there was in the editing of it. Yeah. It, it really is power in the editing. Um, I can guess that the telenovela, like, the, the, like, uh, you know, Lorena de Sur drives an editor crazy because he's got to have so much material that's not actually going up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I know that um, we would shoot 20 to 1. Well, you know, and here's part of it is they're shooting for a show every single day, right? Yeah. Just like a regular um, soap opera. But that also means they shoot it, you got to get it. <laughs> It's got to get they, you Look at all that footage you've got to go through really quickly. And the actors aren't being able because it's, uh, it's you know, they said um, generally it's, uh, they, they did 62 episodes would have been done in 62 days. They took seven months to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had the benefit of the man who wrote the book as the head writer. Yeah, that did help. But it did help. And I think that she said she also read the book about ten times during the movie. And they also had the benefit of they did have... Unlike soap operas, they had the material all in front of us so they could see what was going on. Oh, they happen. did? That's why. Because I, they, they, they I thought, you know, every day they got a different script. No, they give them the material so they knew what they were doing, which means you knew uh, well, where the character was going. Well, yeah, like, well, hey, tomorrow I'm going to be raped. i got to have my clothes off. I better, not, I better look good tomorrow. Now, but remember, like I said, we, we, we've got. Um, we have a balance. We have a unique balance between the telenovelas are basically, they, they, they can do sexy and violence, mm -hmm. but they really can't do overt naked. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can do sexy and overt naked, but you can't do really violence on our stuff. So, And it is being shown on American TV. It was filmed for us, not filmed for, it, it basically dumped over the other country, but it actually filmed for us. This is Telemundo. Mm -hmm. It was filmed for us in the United States. And they film it because it was uh, it was totally aimed for the American audience. Totally, I think two years ago that that Ed, people at NBC made the the decision we want to do something that can carry over, and it is the highest rated telenovela ever made. But she's got this woman has got a history of the you know she's basically the first Latino star woman to make it into American mm -hmm. cinema and also American television. She starred in the highest grossing Latin movie ever shown in the United States. Now mm -hmm. she starred in the highest rated um, Spanish program ever shown in this nation. That's a big deal. Yeah, and she's still under 40. Mm -hmm. So her, you know, she just got... Oh, you beautiful. know you're going to see her. I mean, she's just full of life and yeah. character. She's a, a really, she's a vibrant, bobbly person. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she's watching her behind us, you know, doing the, you know, washing up in the screen and, you know, just watching what's going on. She's seen it already. And she's pacing back and forth about watching from one end to the other when she was doing that. She's, she's watching. She's watching herself, you know. You say, oh, my God, I think I showed a little bit too much in my butt. You know, well, no, she probably showed all her butt. The editor cut mm -hmm. it back, so. But, um, no, but it's, uh, it's all her. She chews up the scenery. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a Joan Crawford, Betty Davis uh, it is. performance. It really is. It's, the movie is them. Oh, no, I, I could have pictured, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Barbara Stanwyck, Joan Crawford, Betty Davis doing the same role when they were 40 years old, or, you know, 36, 37 years old, doing it, you know, and, you know, it would have been just as, uh, you know, macho woman, because those were the characters these women actually played. You know, they were the real... You know, tough women, and this is a, you know, this is a woman that's trying to show you. Actually, what she said, she's trying to show you that she's also a woman, general. She's been drawn into things by 
bad mistakes with men. Oh, she not like anyone would ever do that. Yeah, like she had a history of picking the wrong god off a guy every time in the book. Or the wrong guys kept picking her. Yeah, so she got attracted to the bad boys, which no American woman would ever do, of course. Never, ever, ever. Right, yeah, so, but um, it, it is her. It is her. She's gone. She probably, if she doesn't get an Emmy nomination, she's really getting a shaft. Yeah. Because I could figure on her, but I also figure. NBC and Comcast will have to dump one of the programs that they're pushing in order to get this the nomination. It's a, it's a sense that she's going to win to get the international stuff. Mm -hmm. But they, they want to get her out into the mainstream because yeah. that's the bigger arm because they figured they could take the international. Right? And Comcast, NBC have decided she is the star, mm -hmm. the person they're going to push. There's no doubt about it because they, they featured her in something. Mm -hmm totally featured her in a woman's role in a country that doesn't have women's roles. It meant that they had picked her from her back, from her back, mm -hmm. back past work and decided this is the person we want as, you know, uh, up there, remember they, at, at Universal Studios, folks. Mm -hmm. They're basically trying to pick somebody that's got to be, I would say that action woman that can act for the next decade or so. Well, it's also a role that's not only is it a primary woman role in a country where it's male dominated, it's also in an industry where it's primarily male. That's right. That's right. And we're not talking, and we're talking about the drug trafficking industry is what is the industry that she's in. And the whole business. I mean, uh, look at it this way: Sigourney Weaver is in her sixties and still playing action parts. Remember, she's she's being cast. She's in the next two avatars too, I think. Oh, is she? And Angelina Jolie is basically bowing out. Who, Are you serious? Yeah. She's good in those roles. Uh, so uh, you have a woman that is basically the age of Angelina Jolie that would probably, you know, you know, uh, she you probably know would. there's all of these action parts available out there for the woman that's willing to take them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she's athletic, she's attractive, she looks good wearing nothing. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not, okay, she's... She's hefty like a lot of Latin women, but when you put her in a swimsuit and stuff, she just looks like she's an athlete. Mm -hmm. She doesn't look hefty. She looks like she... She's just shapely. Uh, you know, she is basically, you know, like she could, you know, like my father would say, like she could go bear hunting with a switch. That's a very healthy woman, folks. <laughs> you know, it, it works out a lot because she is an athlete. She, wants, she loves stunts. Mm -hmm. Which, in, which will endear her with all of the male stuntmen in this country. Mm -hmm. A woman that can go out there that's a lead, that will jump off a building and can do it. You'd have never put... Yeah, I, I know she, she jumps off the building, but before she does, she throws her shoes down and she throws her purse down. Yeah. <laughs> and then takes them. Yeah, and they deliberately made certain that she didn't have her pants on because the pants were so god-awful tight that she couldn't have done the jump. No, she couldn't With the have. pants on. With the pants off wearing a man's shirt, she can do the leap. And land gracefully. I mean, I don't know how many times may have done that. But she's not got pad. There's no, uh, from what I could see, there was, she landed on the roof. Mm -hmm. And even though it's a jump from here to here, that's still, you know, if she'd have damaged anything, the show's over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the American Mel Stunt person. Now, it's why they like Jamie Lee Curtis because Jamie Lee Curtis, because her father was Tony Curtis, basically could do all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So they admire women that are capable of working in their field, but she's very capable. And she's an actress, and she's attractive, and she's she's a, she's a, 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 a she's a girl in a full-grown woman's body. Yeah, she is. That's right, and as long as she does, I mean, she's got a, you know, like I said, she's uh, pushing forty, but her career is ahead. We're gonna see her many more times for many yeah. years. This is her, this is her American. She's been in our movies. It's like American debut. But almost. she's been doing it, okay. The 20-year the overnight wonder is what she is. But see, she's been big, just not here. She's been big, but she's also she's also been big here. She's the, the no, no okay, other Latin performer has starred in That's things like true. she has. She is the big Latin woman performer in the world, I guess. Which is, I mean, I didn't know about her until... Uh, I, I, I never heard research. of her before. I mean, people must mainly... Think but she's all over the place. Jennifer Lopez. If you look at her, her background, this is a woman that's basically been acting yeah. since she was six years old, waiting for the day when she could have her breakout role, and this is her breakout. She's been impatient for a very long time. Yeah, since, since she, she was six. six. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she actually did make it by the time she was 16. But this is, uh, what, okay... 
Uh, if you go to Bollywood, they all dream about coming to the United States to work in American films. If you go to uh, uh, Yugoslavia, they dream about, I worked on Kelly's Heroes, there was an awful lot of people that dreamed on that. The English, they've got a god awful great, great industry. The Canadians, they all dream about coming to Hollywood to work. Because this is where you know you've made it. And she actually did make it a long time ago. But she's, um, she didn't, I don't think she's actually felt like she made it until this show came on and got such public acceptance. And the fact well, and that... and she's the lead on it. And, and the fact that uh, NBC, Universal, Comcast, uh, Telemundo, they all decided this is what we're going to do. I mean, her I mean, place in history... That's a really big deal. Her place in history set. Mm -hmm. They'll always remember her as the woman that starred in the show that broke the barriers. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, you know we're praising it because it was it was in my part opinion. Of see, we got to what well, we got to see history last night. When you get to see history being made, it's really something. So I guess this, should be, oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, uh, but you know we we'll be following up because we're going to be talking next, of course, about Emmy nominations, mm -hmm. which will be coming out soon. Well, we hope that some of the stuff that we get um, the 14th of July, they're going to do the Emmy nominations list. And we shall know around the 14th whether this show or any of the ones we saw made it. I'm crossing our fingers. So until until then, this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you mm -hmm. can always go to www.montybubbles.net on the net. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D, and thank you once again for over 40 million links on the internet.